Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Commerce Biology. Today I am going to talk about structure of virus, classification of virus and the process by which virus replicates inside the cell. So before we begin our course, please like, comment and subscribe my YouTube channel. So friends, let's begin the topic. Okay, you can see the slide and uh, please read uh, by yourself. I'll be explaining about the virus. So virus is a very small ultra microscopic means it can be only visualized by the use of electron microscope because viruses are smaller than bacteria. They can easily pass from the pores from which virus uh, from which bacteria can pass. And you ha we have to remember that the size of virus ranges from 20 nanometer to 300 nanometer. The smallest viruses, parvoviruses are, are about 20 nanometer in size and uh, the biggest viruses that is pox virus uh, is 300 nanometer in diameter. And virus has only DNA or RNA, but virus lacks both DNA, DNA and RNA. I mean, virus contains either DNA or RNA, never both. Both DNA and RNA cannot be there in virus. This is a very important thing that we you have to remember. And virus are intracellular obligate parasite. It means they need living cells to survive, to replicate. Outside the living cells, they are non-living. They cannot show the characteristics of living things. So they are kept in the borderline between living and non-living things. Another thing is that virus lack enzymes that are required for the metabolic activities. Viruses have some enzymes. For example, reverse transcriptase in case of HIV virus. But they lack the necessary enzymes for protein and nucleic acid synthesis and remember one point that is virus is neither prokaryotic cell nor they are eukaryotic cells virus are acellular so viruses cannot be killed viruses are unaffected by the antibiotics that are used to kill bacteria or to to uh, to balance to check the binary fission of bacteria because virus lacks those sites where meta where antibiotics finds the target so this is the definition this is the important things that you have to remember about viruses and another things that when you are asked what is viron then you should know that the extracellular infectious virus particle is known as virus means virus when they are outside but they are in infectious states then they are known as virons we have to remember this point and those cells which are affected by the viruses produce interferons the substance that interfere the replication process of the virus and they have the support us to fight against those viral diseases so let us move on the next slide. Now we can compare it is the comparison between virus and bacteria. You can see that most of the things that are present in bacteria, the things that are present in bacteria are not present in viruses. So there is a huge difference between virus and bacteria. For example, Viruses can be grown, cannot be grown in artificial culture media. Virus need living cells for the replication process. Viruses cannot be cultured in bacterial culture medium, but bacteria can be cultured in artificial culture medium. Though there are some exceptions also. Bacteria contains both DNA and RNA, but viruses contains only RNA or DNA. Similarly, the Protein synthesis machinery is present in bacteria. 
Bacteria contains muramic acid. Some bacteria contains muramic acid. They are sen sensitive to antibiotics. And all these things are absent in viruses. Though some viruses may have few enzymes. Now, you can see the structure of virus. This is the structure of coronavirus that is causing a huge burden. And, and this is a pandemic this time. This virus has uh, spread throughout the world. You can see the structure of this virus. You can see the virus contains RNA. RNA. This is a RNA virus. It means coronavirus is RNA virus and it is covered by the envelope. You can see M protein, spikes, glycoproteins, membrane proteins, hemagglutin, esterase. And this virus also contains E protein. These are all are the, all these things are antigenic in property. By the help of spikes, this coronavirus can go and attach with the cells which contains its receptors in our respiratory system. Now you can see the structure of HIV virus. This is also the virus which has RNA inside the, inside the protein coat. And that protein coat is known as capsid. And you can see various types of spikes. There are many spikes coming out. From the envelope, you can see GP glycoprotein 120, GP41, hostile proteins, integrase. This is enzymes. I have already told you that some enzymes are present in viruses. You can see reverse transcriptase. That is also an enzyme. So this is the diagram, schematic diagram of HIV virus. So that I can make you understand about the structure of viruses later on. So this is a, a diagram of uh, Hepatitis B virus. Remember, hepatitis B is DNA virus, but other hepatitis A, hepatitis C, these are RNA virus. But hepatitis B is DNA virus. You can see DNA polymerase enzyme that is inside the capsid and it is 442 nanometer in diameter. Yeah, it means this virus. Now you can see the morphology. I have already told you that the size of bacteria, sorry, the size of virus is 20 to 300 nanometer. There is structure can be roughly spherical. Rabies virus is bullet shaped. Pox virus is rectangular in shape. Uh, see, uh, virus have different types of shape. They may be round. They may be bullet shaped. They may be rectangular. And you can you can uh, see the point that new the nu nucleic acid of the uh, viruses are covered by a protein coat. The coat the name of the coat the name of the coat is capsid. Capsid and nucleic acid collectively is known as nucleocapsid and the capsid helps and the capsid helps virus to enter inside the living cells or they protect and they protect the genetic material of virus. You can compare the structure of virus with uh, different other microorganisms, chlamydia, uh, the focus it is uh, round in shape and the staphylococcus aureus generally gives grape-like colonies uh, uh, when you see uh, after gram staining in microscope. Again the shape of viruses they may be spherical, rod shaped, brick shaped, tadpole shaped, bullet shaped or they may be filamentous. You can see the spherical shape of the virus in this diagram. You can see rod shaped structure in this diagram. You can see brick shaped you can see tadpole shaped viruses and you can see the dangerous deadly virus. This is the bullet shaped virus, rabies virus. It is also uh, called rhabdovirus. This causes hydrophobia, the disease, rabies. Look at this deadly, deadly virus. This is Ebola virus. You also have heard about the pandemic of Ebola. This is a filamentous virus. I have already told you that virus contains either DNA or RNA and that DNA and RNA is covered by protein coat that is known as capsid and the capsid has following types of symmetry, cubicle that is icosahedral symmetry, helical symmetry and complex symmetry. In icosahedral symmetry, it contains 12 vertices and 20 sites. For example, herpes viruses, adenoviruses, toga viruses and in helical symmetry, it is uh, the capsomeres are wound, caps in the helical symmetry, capsomeres and nucleic acids are wound together and they form a helical or a spiral tube, for example, orthomix of virus and paramix of viruses. You can see the diagram of icosahedral symmetry. It contains 20 faces and 12 vertices. 
Now you can see the helical symmetry. The, the symmetry of the virus looks like the telephone wire. The complex symmetry, this is the Fox virus. I have told you that this is the biggest virus, 300 nanometer in diameter. Now, some virus may have enveloped genetic material covered with protein coat. And again, outside the protein coat, some virus have enveloped. Some virus do not have enveloped. And that envelope mostly are present in those viruses which comes out of the cell after maturation by budding. And that envelope is made from lipoprotein. And from that envelope, many spikes, for example, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase, that type of spikes comes out from the envelope that helps in the attachment of bacteria, sorry, that helps in the attachment of virus in the living cells. For example, you can see influenza virus that has two types of peplomates. You can hear, uh, look there, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. And the viruses, the examples of the viruses, enveloped viruses are influenza virus, paramyxia of viruses. And these enveloped viruses are susceptible to lipid solvents. And remember one point, I have shown the diagram of coronavirus, you have uh, coronavirus, SARS, COVID. COVID-19 is a disease caused by coronavirus and SARS-2 is the name given by WHO to that coronavirus. That is also susceptible to lipid solvent. So when you wash your hand, then the lipid layer will be destroyed by that soap. So they become, then we can be protected from the infection of that virus. Now, you can see uh, different types of uh, structure of the virus. Now, let me highlight the point. You can um, you can see, look at the slide. You can see the genetic material. This may be RNA or DNA and it is covered by this protein coat that is called capsid and capsid is made from capsomeres. And the amount of capsomeres are also different in different viruses. Again, look, this is the icosahedral symmetry. The capsid has icosahedral symmetry. I have already told you this do not have envelope but this virus has an envelope and in the envelope you can see spikes peplomeres coming out from here again you can see the helical symmetry this much only this much is also a virus if virus content dna and protein coat that's enough but some viruses have envelope also you can see now there is a helical symmetry of the capsid and that Capsid is covered by protein coat and there are the glycoprotein spikes. So spikes are present in the cell. Sorry, spikes are present in the envelope. So here is the mistake. This one, this black oval structure is glycoprotein spikes. Now resistance. So viruses are heat liable. Uh, they are more resistant they are resistance to chemical disinfectants and some of the antiviral disinfectants are hypochlorides hydrogen peroxide potassium permanganate organic iodine and they are stored as minus 70 degrees celsius again classification now classification is very important when you want to classify the virus at first you look at the nucleic acid what types of nucleic acid is there either dna or rna so virus may be either dna virus or rna or rna virus so Symmetry of capsid. Definitely, you have to look about the capsid. What types of symmetry is there? Icosahedral, helical, or complex? Now, presence or absence of envelope. I have already told you that some viruses have envelope and some viruses do not have envelope. But replication strategy is some something that you have to understand because replication process of viruses are different. So let uh, begin the replication process. But before that. Uh, let me explain how you classify the virus on the basis of nucleic acid, the RNA or DNA virus. And RNA can be segmented or non-segmented. That may be linear or circular. That is also the characteristics of the nucleic acid present in the virus. That may be single stranded, double stranded. If single stranded uh, RNA may RNA, then that RNA may, may be positive sense or negative sense. Now, what is positive sense and what is negative sense? If the RNA. If the RNA is positive sense, it, it, is, it can directly engage in production of the viral proteins. But if it is negative sense, 
then it has it should change into the complementary RNA so that it can form viral proteins. It means positive chains can work directly without changing, but negative chains have to convert itself to the messenger RNA that can now carry out the production of proteins. So classification on the basis of symmetry I have already told. Now the DNA virus you can easily understand this DNA virus you can see DNA virus double stranded single stranded or complex enveloped or non enveloped okay enveloped this one is enveloped and non enveloped double stranded means or they are they may be also enveloped or non enveloped and uh, you can see different examples over here now RNA virus also same thing here now the replication process that takes place inside the cell the virus may be DNA virus or RNA virus, very simple, but the steps are same. You can see first attachment, that is adsorption and penetration, uncoating, synthesis of viral nucleic acid and protein assembly release. So these are the very basic steps you can see there. First, as first virus has a spikes. Okay, virus should have what those substances that can attach with the receptor of the cell. So some virus may be enveloped, some virus may not have enveloped, but they should find the receptor in the cell. So different virus have different target. Now let me explain. At first look at the cell membrane, the, the, this cell membrane has various receptors present in it. So you can see, uh, you can, um, let me highlight this. Uh, now what is this? Let me show you. These are the receptors. This is a virus and this virus has its genetic material here. Okay, here. Now, this has an envelope. These are the peplomeres or these are the spikes. Now, now this virus come here and it get attached with these spikes in the receptor of the cell. Look here. The virus attached and this adsorption. Okay, it is independent to temperature and but for attachment, viral should have protein that ha that can attach with the cellular receptors. Here is the receptors and this is the viral protein, glycoprotein, okay. With the help of this, adsorption takes place. Now the virus, this virus has a cell membrane. So this cell membrane has to fuse with the cell membrane. Look here, cell membrane of the cell. After that, there is a fusion. Now this red, the dangerous part where we where there is a DNA or RNA, okay, it will go inside the cell. Look here. This is going inside the cell. For example, herpes simplex virus, paramyxo virus, HIV virus, okay, HIV virus, paramyxo virus or herpes simplex virus. It means this virus is HIV virus has enveloped. You have to remember that. Now uncoating. Uncoating means what? You can see. Here is the presence of, look here, here is the RNA or DNA. Now this protein coat will be digested and this L I have uh, mentioned here, DNA RNA, it has to be, it should be released out. So there are some enzymes, digestive enzymes, lysosomal enzymes that will now digest the protein coat uh, because of this reason, the genome RNA or DNA can come out of the protein coat. Now, what will happen after the DNA or RNA comes out of the protein coat? Then, if the virus is DNA virus, the DNA of the virus goes inside the nucleus and find our DNA. And use the machinery of our cells, components of our cells to make more and more viral DNA. From DNA, RNA will be formed. From RNA, translation, transcription. You have known different points in class 2. Class 12, sorry. So by transcription, viral RNA will be formed from translation. Different types of viral proteins will be formed. But there is one exception that is pox virus, the biggest virus. And RNA virus replication, uh, the most of the components of RNA virus will be formed in cytoplasm. But I have no, in the positive sense and negative, negative sense RNA. Please, please go through that. Okay. Now, 
there are also aspects on that as ortho mixovirus para viruses and retrovirus the dangerous virus the virus the one of the dangerous virus in retrovirus you can find as a weeds you can find reverse transcriptase enzyme so why retrovirus because retrovirus rna from rna dna is formed and this dna have to go inside the nucleus so this is one exception now protein are always synthesized in cytoplasm remember this steps of replication first these are the steps these are the process that takes place in the replication of process, replication of viruses that is transcription of mrna translation of mrna from trans from uh, replication dna is formed from transcription messenger rna for, is formed and when there is a messenger rna and then translation process takes place there and uh, virus uh, makes their proteins orally proteins and again replication of viral uh, viral nucleic acid will takes place correct the spelling of nucleic acid okay uh, replication of virus nucleic acid will takes place and then synthesis of late structure of proteins that means the spikes okay that will be uh, formed now in maturation process all the formed genetic materials and other soft transits for example dna rna and those protein protein cores for protein cores many capsomeres should be there they will be collected okay and then finally the virus will be ready to come out burst out of the cell but if the virus is a virus once it's enveloped then it will come out by budding process and that collection of the assembly of the uh, virus may take place in nucleus or cytoplasm for in case of non enveloped viruses they develop fully intracellularly but in enveloped viruses nucleocapsid is complete to find the its uh, envelope it should come out of the cell by budding process now there is also eclipse phase uh, the eclipse phase uh, uh, is the interval between virus penetration to formation of first infectious progeny. Now release virus will uh, come out by budding or uh, they may be re uh, released uh, uh, by other processes. Thank you. Bye bye and take care.